Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of Iblis Manifestations podcast. On today's special 60th episode, I'm honored to be joined by none other than Mr. Paolo Girardi. Paolo is an artist with a very specific and very intriguing style of painting. Um, he does a lot of uh, canvas style of uh, painting uh, and in a very classical way. And uh, he basically creates a lot of different artworks for uh, different bands. And these are all very notable names within the underground, uh, such as the likes of uh, the Gile, Fire Spawn, Blasphemer Fogger, or even recently Cryptopsy. And it's a very extensive list of other bands, you know, so there are many others in that list. And uh, I've always been fascinated with his work, so it was an absolute blast to get to speak to him on the podcast here. So we got to talk a lot about just the whole creative process for him, uh, as well as we could dissect that, obviously, with creativity always being somewhat of a sensitive thing for uh, a lot of the artists uh, that we know. And, you know, we got to talk about um, just the whole process for him uh, mentally and uh, how he finds himself as someone who predominantly creates art um, sort of within the underground, and that's what he does for his living and how he weighs that against his presence in society and, you know, different things in life in general. So it was a very, very candid, very honest, very interesting conversation that we had, you know, and I couldn't be more proud of it. So uh, I think that uh, we've got a very special 60th episode ahead for you guys, and I think that you will enjoy it. So without giving away too much of the episode, uh, I think I'll probably keep it at, at that. Um, if you guys are new to Iblis Manifestations, well, first of all, welcome. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of long format conversations with uh, artists of all types, uh, including musicians, artists, uh, even photographers, other types of entrepreneurs. And, uh, and all sorts, and these are all very much people from uh, different uh, backgrounds and uh, different upbringings, but also different perspectives. So, um, yeah, you get to hear um, the perspective of a lot of these people over life in general. And I think that there's a lot generally to be learned, you know, at the very least, if one simply wants to observe these perspectives. So, uh, if you do enjoy what we do, then please feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel. You can share around the episodes. And uh, most importantly, feel free to let us know your thoughts and feedback. We do very much appreciate it. I know I sound like a broken record when I say that, but I really do. And, uh, you know, whether that's done privately or publicly, it's appreciated nevertheless. So, Shortly will be coming the episode, and one more thing that I want to uh, mention as well, uh, as some of you might have already seen, uh, my band uh, Trivex, uh, we are releasing an album titled Illowa Burns Out, this will be out on Cold Never Dies, and this will be coming out on the 29th of September, and we already have a new music video out called Azrael, I believe most of you have already seen this one, but in case you haven't, you can go on the link for Iblis Manifestations and check it out, or simply search uh, Trivax Azrael on YouTube, and then you can see what we've been up to. So, any thoughts and consideration towards Trivax would also be very much appreciated. And uh, an additional thing would be, if you do enjoy listening to your podcasts, then um, please to let you know that Eblis Manifestations is a part of the Horsemen of the Podcasting Apocalypse. So there are various other shows that I would highly recommend you guys to check out. And uh, there is a link in the description for all of those uh, that you can check out and you can see what catches your eye. And one of those shows being the show of my very good friend Jackie from Into the Necrosphere, who, uh, who I actually had an appearance with very recently. And this appearance will be out on uh, on Tuesday, on Tuesday the 29th of August, so just after bank holiday. So this will be coming out very near this episode, so I recommend you guys to go and check that out. It's a very spicy fucking conversation, as, as it always is between myself and Jackie, so make sure to check that out. I believe that is it with all of our plugs before this episode. So once again... 
Thank you all so much for joining me on this whole ride for Iblis Manifestations. It's been fucking wild. If if you told me that I'd even end up making 60 episodes I you know, about a year and a half ago when I started this whole thing, I probably would have told you to go fuck yourself, you are lying. But of course, <laughs> here we are. And, uh, and I don't know if YouTube's going to get me done for that one. I don't care. I will speak however way I want to on here. And... Uh, and yeah, you know, and it's really, truly been an honor to have so many special guests. And uh, speaking of which, Paula is absolutely no exception to that. And uh, him and I had a very interesting conversation. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Mr. Paolo Girardi to Iblis Manifestations. <laughs> Alrighty then, good evening, Paolo, welcome to Iblis Manifestations Podcast, I've been really looking forward to speaking to you, man, how you doing? Very good, thank you, I'm uh, relaxing, <laughs> relaxing in my studio. Yeah, I can see, I mean, I know you've got a huge uh, history of the amount of artists that you have worked for, uh, quite a, a diverse selection of extreme metal artists, uh, that uh, you've uh, collaborated with and I think that just shows in that background that you've got for anyone who's watching the video right now it looks like a museum in the background yeah a bit it's my studio it's my uh, nest let's say yeah. uh, if I am an animal this is a nest <laughs> so it's, uh, it's my place that's my place that's my uh, I don't know coffin <laughs> everything that's my word here. So I love it, just man. Fighting the fighting reality, the ugliness of reality inside here. Mm. Uh, Have you place. always had that studio? Always, all the time, all the time. Uh, if I'm not in my garden uh, in uh, in the early morning, uh, I go work my uh, in my garden uh watering watering now because it's summer and working uh, hand working and harvesting or of course every day and then uh, i come here i don't even uh, eat uh, at lunch i just paint all day long and then maybe uh, work out before dinner and then that's my life no no other I, i'm always here that's a that's uh, no, a pretty I... fucking modest, but I can also imagine inspiring life. Uh, I don't know if you remember, man, but you and I actually met about four years ago. This was in uh, London at the gig with Destroyer Six Six Six, Nocturnal Graves, and Dead Congregation uh, at the uh, and in Concestus at, at the Underworld in London. I remember speaking to. You there very briefly and just um, speaking to you about your work and stuff and then you just gave me the tightest hug ever and then afterwards i was like this guy is cool as fuck you know <laughs> so <laughs> i've been looking forward to like somehow i've had it at the back of my head with the uh with the 50 odd episodes i've had on this podcast i always wanted to have you on here and just discuss some of your uh work that you've done but you just said something that piqued my interest and i've seen you talk about this before um you grow and harvest your own food. Is that correct? Yeah, no, just vegetables and fruits, no, not not uh, other. Like, I used to have uh, chickens till uh, one year ago. I don't have no more now. But, uh, yeah, no, just that because, uh, you know, I have a garden that my father that died uh, left to me. He oh, left right. that one to me. So I just feel like uh, doing the same thing and in the morning and you know it's uh, my 
a lot of nature also. So it's also in my, you know, in my DNA, DNA sure. in my blood. So I love nature. I always loved nature. So it's to me, it's just entertainment. Maybe for many people, it's just hard work. To me, it's just a pleasure. For sure. Is that a quite a common thing uh, over there for people to be gardening and doing things like that? What? Jesus. Um, what uh, that was impressive, man. I just watched you open that fucking beer with your, with your teeth. That, that's, that's fucking <laughs> yeah. old school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, the Norwegians use their lighters, the Italians just use their teeth. So, uh, yeah, cheers. Enjoy. No, no, Italians with the, with the lighter, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys just, too. just me because, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I feel older when, 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 if you say that. Right, right. No, you're just next <laughs> level. That's the that's um yeah that's that's fucking great, man. So cheers to you. Um, the question cheers. I was asking was uh, if this is a common thing in your culture over there, where a lot of people will be gardening and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, I don't understand. Um, so is it quite common for um, people in your ah, okay. region to be doing gardening and things like yeah, that? Yeah, well, uh, less for uh, young people. I'm not young. Well, I'm 49. No, uh, well, uh, gardening is uh, very common because um, here my town, uh, surroundings, and my region, uh, many people uh, live with uh, grapes, harvest, so wines or oil. So olive trees, I used to have olive trees. No, now I don't have no more. So it's mm, it's very no, it's very common here. Also, you know the weather. The Italian weather is different. So you can grow things uh, on uh, in winter time as well. So yeah, maybe uh, Middle Italy and South Southern Italy. It's kind of it's kind of common. That's cool, that. man. I think there's a lot of uh, value to people, um, you know, just taking up things like that, growing their own food, especially in today's world where everything is becoming increasingly centralized, where you've got bigger corporations providing people with food and nutrients and things like that, which are often... Um, not really the best of quality and neither are they the best for the soil and the environment so i do see a lot of a lot of value actually in farmers uh, all around the world and i think it's a, it's an art form that must be protected at all times yeah yeah uh, actually we are uh, always more people doing that but uh, maybe in italy it's different because in italy it's uh, it's more a, tra a tradition. It's more a tradition here, especially not in maybe uh, more in uh, middle southern Italy. Well, I think one thing I can commend Italy for is that that tradition part is very important, especially because I think Italy was perhaps the first country to actually completely turn down and reject the idea of people possibly eating insects for food in the future and i think that was a that was a pretty good move i know, I know that might seem simple on the surface but i think that's a good direction uh that the country would be taking and this is where times these are the times where tradition i think actually do a lot of good for us as well sometimes they might hold us back but these are the times where i think they're in the right direction in my opinion yeah, uh, I think the same. Like, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, against uh, eating insects. Like, uh, I could eat, eat insects uh, one day one, <laughs> for dinner. I don't know, but I wouldn't for a lifetime or for two days too. I, I wouldn't. But uh, just yeah. uh, we are uh, tied to. Me to the ground a bit you know we are latin we are mediterranean so we are uh, grounded very you know grounded yes. you know what i mean 
Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, that actually I relate to as well. I mean, it's a part of my own culture as well. You know, my grandparents, they always used to uh, grow stuff in their own garden. And then as a kid, I used to grow stuff in there as well. You know, used to grow uh, all kinds of different fruits, green tea, you know, like really cool things. And it was always this fascinating but terrific harmonious uh, relationship you know that you have like you said with the ground you know and you just it keeps you grounded and and inside and you get to have a relationship with you with the food that you eat which i think maybe this is somehow um perhaps a little bit um overly sentimental of me or a little bit superstitious but i actually believe that when you create that kind of relationship with your food, you don't even need to eat as much of it in order for it to sustain you and give you the better nutrients. I feel like your body somehow absorbs it better simply from the fact that you have a direct relationship with it. I don't know whether that's actually true or if it's a placebo thing, but that's something I, I do quite strongly believe in. Yeah. I think, I think the same, exactly the same. Like, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> Like I've been, uh, many people that uh, watches me now. Uh, uh, like I've known uh, in uh, the USA, like where they um, they eat pills to you know uh, for vitamins for uh, minerals. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I don't need them because uh, I eat my own uh, garlic every day my own onions every day my own uh, everything <laughs> every day and i also uh, pick up uh, wild herbs wild um, plants to put inside my salad of course uh, my region my place my town isn't polluted isn't polluted mm. at all so i can do that so i think i'm blessed for that Absolutely, I think I'm blessed. Man, yeah. Maybe it took time to understand that because you know when you're young you you want big towns and big shows, uh, many people around, uh, uh, hopes, possibilities. Um, now I'm on, I'm, on, I'm just okay here with simple things like three things and I'm happy. I don't I don't need more than that. I totally just, appreciate that, man, you know, and I think it is a just, unique it's thing. It's just a classic, uh, sorry, it's just a uh, average, uh, mine are just average words from an older person. <laughs> not, 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 nothing special, just, you know, everyone uh, growing up and getting a bit older uh, appreciates, uh, starts to appreciate uh, simple things, that two or three things no more than than those because energies are all are also lower so you can uh, uh, channel your energy your uh, your strength in few things you know the, the most important ones yeah <laughs> because you're not constantly being distracted by the pollutions and the pollution doesn't always necessarily have to be in the format of a big dark cloud in the sky it can be in the format of too much information being thrown in your way it can be too much drama too much unnecessary stress and i think there is value in minimizing in that sense and you know to that point one thing that i want to ask you about how much do you think your lifestyle which is definitely one i personally commend by the way how much do you think that's something that uh, influences your creativity and aids you? Because it sounds to me that you're very much in a, well, I guess sort of in a purified state almost. So how much would you say that that, um, that has a positive attribute to your creativity and what it is that you do with your art? Uh, my lifestyle. You're talking about my lifestyle. How yeah, you're. It influences. Yeah, my, my art, my my painting. That's right. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah, a lot because I always uh, base on my painting or my on my art on my mind setting. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's nature. Uh, aesthetically, and you know, uh, like. Uh, 
in a more deep uh, way. I don't know how to say, like uh, it's nature. So I always start from nature. So that's. So when you say you start from nature, exactly what do you mean by that? Do you mean that it's just that sense of being groundedness that brings you closer to your own creativity? I don't know. I don't know. Like my my creativity must be a mystery. <laughs> must stay a mystery to myself too. You know, it's a magic. I don't I try not sure. to think. Just, mm. I, I try to do what I love. Of course, you know, like gardening and uh, painting, workout is very important because I was uh, used to be a freestyle wrestler. So now yes. I keep on keep on working out almost every day. And music, of course, of course, uh, you know, it's uh, very important. But uh, uh, the rest is just. Uh, magic no no thoughts no thought no rationality i don't i don't i just have to dream like a child uh, the, ju just dreaming yeah dreaming when, when they commission me a painting they give me the directions and i just uh, dream like a child i just paint uh, like when i used to be a toddler when i used to be one or two or three mm. um, I start to pay painting without even drawing, without even doing a sketch, and that's that's what I do. It's a dreaming. If you that's... stop dreaming, you die. In my, opinion, in my opinion, that is extremely powerful, man. I, you know, I think that's very wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's uh, no, no, the yeah. thing. I was born with that. Like I was born with that. It's just tasting. I, I don't know even. I don't know even why. It's just uh, a need. A need is always the base of everything. If you don't have the need, uh, I try to be simple because I have to be uh, hungry. Uh, sure. I have to dream. I have to desire. Uh, I don't have to be. Fulfill it with the superfluous things, just to dream like a child yeah, and no. act like too. So I act like a child in uh, uh, while I'm painting uh, colors. I dream uh, colors like a child. Uh, I'm a child. <laughs> I'm the child I used to be. I still. That's so powerful, man. I wonder how many people could say that about themselves who are still in touch and in contact with their inner child in such a way. Because to me, I think that's our purest form of character that we have as a human being. Yes, there's all the extra stuff that gets added on as you grow up, but I think that that inner child that you're explaining, to me, I understand that because I feel that that's at the at the root of every person but i think a lot of people either either that child is wounded or they've somehow lost the way and i think this actually applies to most people you know and i'm not saying i'm entirely exempt from that but i relate to you more and i think that that right there is is a powerful thing and that's something that no one else could either try and put a label on it or try and explain it to you that's just something that you know about yourself and that's what makes it special i think exactly that's what i'm i'm just trying to to say like many people are afraid of uh, speaking as children mm -hmm. many people <laughs> have also forgotten this child inside of them while this child is still screaming because yeah. the child is screaming all your lifetime. Every one of us has the child screaming inside the life, you, inside, inside the lifetime, you know, throughout the years. The child never dies. It's always there screaming, screaming and screaming, and you have to follow this child. If you don't follow it, 
he will devour you, he will destroy you. So many people uh, destroy themselves with the wrong choices because they don't listen to this child. This is my, this is my uh, thought in general, no, not about me, but um, in general, like generally people in, in the world, I don't know, everyone. Sure. No, I, I feel that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm totally on the same page with you on that one. Let's, uh, shall we talk a bit more about your uh, art then in that case? Uh, I think the first time I will, have, um, I will have seen you, your work rather, will have most likely been, I think, either through Blasphemophager, which I know you had a very long and lengthy collaboration with, or it, if yeah. not that, then it will have been Inquisition. I believe for uh, obscure verses for the multiverse, which I know that was like the you did a yeah. lot of uh, reissues for them, but I know that yeah, was like exactly. the first proper reissues. one. Yeah, reissues with the seasonal mist. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. tell me, how did you even get started? How did you get uh, get into even well, doing this in the first my place? Start, uh, my start. My start was uh, very simple. Like, mm, I think I've always uh, known that I would be a professional painter. Always. I don't know why. There's something in me that uh, made me, you know, uh, sure about it. I don't know why. I don't know. Mm. But uh, in in 90s, I used to paint, uh, you know, the cassettes, you know, the recorded cassettes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like handmade ones. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you know, for friends and things like that. And but uh, in the second part on 2000s, like 2005, 2006, uh, Blasimo Fager, that uh, they were, uh, they are they, now they, they don't exist no more, but they are from a town close to mine. So we knew, we knew, uh, we were friends, we used to be friends. They, they told me to paint their uh, artworks because I used to paint uh, still lives, portraits and uh, old stuff, old, like ancient style stuff and uh, copies of the 17th uh, masterpiece, uh, century masterpieces, like Caravaggio, things like that. And uh, I, I used to paint even, even while I had the odd jobs, I used to paint in the night, for example, and keep on, like it's a, it was a training to me. Always, never, sure. never, uh, never quit with painting, never quitted. So they told me just to paint for us. And I, I said, okay, the so one, one LP, two and three. And they got uh, in, they, got hired, I don't know how to say. Uh, with Signed, uh, do you mean? Signed, exactly. Uh, with the Californian guy, the Yosuke. Uh, or... Uh, what's, what's the label? Or... Uh, uh, the Yosuke label. It's Redwood, California. Okay, yeah. No. Yeah, like, I'm not too sure. Okay. So, Blasphemer Fogger got uh, signed after you did a few LPs for them. Yeah, in this, in this, uh, in this important, uh, let's say, in uh, extreme, uh, in the extreme metal, uh, uh, in, in uh, they they just uh, had uh, extreme metal bands, so sure. uh, Dioclesion and then uh, other many many bands in, in those years wanted me as an artist and as a painter because I'm not an artist, I'm a painter. Um, they wanted me and uh, I started like that, uh, just uh, a bit uh, accidentally, by coincidence, a bit, but uh, a bit uh, uh, not because I wanted that. So I, I started like doing things for friends. Um, Sure. You know, it's metal. Metal is uh, friendship. So I started with that. And now I'm happy because I'm 
uh, I not often like I I, I can say always um, paint for uh, friends. Mm -hmm. All the people that contact me are uh, they're they're very good. Even sure. if they they their next albums are painted from uh, by other painters. I'm always friends with them. Like I'm, I'm, I'm always friend with them. I'm stay respectful, and they too. So I rarely, rarely uh, me met uh, bad people. Really, mm. always good people. I don't know why. I'm, I'm lucky. I don't know. Maybe I'm lucky. <laughs> well, maybe it's, uh, it's thirteen years. 13 years in metal, painting yeah. artworks, and um, I'm always lucky. Always good people. I don't know why. Maybe it's that you see the good in people. Maybe that's a, just a reflection of you, and that's where you sort of intertwine with. Maybe no. Well, uh, maybe also also I I wanna see I, wa I wanna be blunt. Like in Italy, I'm I'm used to. Um, the concept of job of working is uh, different than uh, in uh, Anglo-Saxon countries. Sure. Here, it's like being a slave. If they right. pay you, you are a slave and you are underpaid. And often, uh, you are paid the cash, not legal, like no, you know, no taxes, nothing. It's your just underpaid and uh, it's illegal. So uh, when I discovered the way of thinking of uh, <laughs> USA or uh, North European uh, countries that is more uh, civil, I mean, I love Italy. I'm, I'm not saying Italy is shit. It's the best country in the world to me. <laughs> I love Italy. But sure. for the work, for, for job, no. For yeah. for job is uh, I've discovered very very good people outside. Well, uh, I, I think the... I think this is actually very commendable, man. And I love hearing stories like that. Obviously, knowing about yourself and sort of knowing that you uh, had this sort of humble farmer background, and then yet, even though you do live a modest lifestyle, the fact that you are your own boss simply by following your passion and your creativity i think that's a fucking beautiful story you know like there's that's the dip if there's a definition for success that's it i think i don't know i, I do what i like yeah I just do what i like i sure. just following following myself mm -hmm. i love i love metal and i love painting and ju just join at the two things I've been very lucky to meet uh, Rinaldo, the ex bassist, no, the bassist of Blasphemophager, bassist and voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vocals, yeah. He, the guy Rinaldo who used to have a mustache. I don't know if he best, still has one. One of my best friends. Yeah. Still now, he's, he lives in Berlin now. Okay. Uh, yeah, in university, uh, uh, working in university. He's a chemist. chemist. Um, who? He, yeah, he's a chemist. Actually, the lyrics of Blasphemophager were like uh, chemistry or chemistry. It's a word, the chemistry. Chemistry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, it a, is it a word? It is, okay. yes. Chemistry, chemistry, ph philosophical uh, phys physics, huh. like uh, quantistic... Uh, I don't know. Quantic <laughs> physics, know. I mean, science and chemistry yeah, exactly, and things exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah at least like like, like pack it up stuff. Interesting. Like, uh, Is intellectual this... uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, what fuck it fuck it up. Totally weird. Is this stuff. why the guitarist would always wear like a gas mask on stage or something then? Yeah, I've been with him at uh, Keep It True Festival. Uh, this uh, he was the, the driver. Uh, the last uh, last spring, Alberto Ooh. Berry, yeah, mm. with a big belly, with a big belly, yeah, the big right. belly. That's cool, yeah. man. 
I'll uh, I'll ask you one question, and this is uh, I had uh, another fellow designer artist that I had on the podcast as well, uh, Mr. Adrian Baxter. You know, he's a fantastic uh, artist, uh, very different style to yourself, but I can sort of see the parallels. But I one question that I asked him, and I want to ask you the same thing: is when it's something like creativity, it's something that sort of channels through in a very much a uh, free flowing state but wh- you know so like you do it because you want to do it or as you put it you need to do it and i'm a firm believer of that um whether it's music or artwork or whatever but one thing that's always interesting to me is how do you maintain that when it becomes a career and you don't you sort of don't get a creative block how do you you know because when it becomes a career then there's an expectation for it and I always find the expectation to be sort of this weird signal when it comes to the ocean of creativity. It feels like it's not meant to be there somehow, if that makes sense, particularly as it's an external one. So how do you sort of, uh, to simplify it, um, does being a professional painter um, have any kind of effect on your creativity? And if so, is that positive or negative? Not all we know. Not all we knowing. It's feeling it. It's different. It's uh, uh, harder to accept uh, because uh, I am a dreamer. Uh, I'm, I'm just a dreamer. I'm, I'm a dreamer uh, full time, really. <laughs> so it's uh, it has been difficult. Uh, this uh, it has been a battle last years. I gone crazy too for that. I, I, I lost my mind for that. Just had to stop painting one time for uh, six months, and uh, going crazy several several times every year. And I I haven't been uh, very well for years for that. And now I'm, um, you know, I'm just. I found myself and then, uh, you know, uh, it can, I can say like, uh, I, I can say the same. We have said like, um, I like two, three things and I do those things. No more than that. I don't have to be, you know, living, the, living in the future or living in the past. I just have to, do what I do and uh, beautiful things, beautiful people inside, uh, even if few people, but just few people, uh, good people like him, like Daniele, my photographer. I, mm-hmm. I have three friends in my town and just few things and beautiful things. No more than that. I don't have to think big things. I just have to be... Mm. Focus it on my paintings, and uh, just that. Sure. So, no in a sense, just more so being grounded, like you said earlier. That's yeah, it's a literal actually, thing. Actually, yeah, actually, the, the garden helps me with that mm. because sure. uh, keep me tied uh, to the ground. Um, well, it was a passage. It was a necessary, mandatory passage to me. So now it's, you know, it's not completely past. It's it's still inside of me, you know, it's a button. Sometimes it comes and it goes, but uh, most of the times I'm okay. I'm just okay. I used to be crazy because the yes. first years, like the first, the first four or five years, I used to paint all the time, all all the all year long, even Sunday or Saturday. So because I used I, I, I had to join quantity quantity and quality. Used sure. to paint a lot to conquer people's uh, trust, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, I had to work a lot. So, do, do you feel a lot of pressure? Like, let's say, for example, one big band 
gives you a project. Let's, for example, you were working with Firespawn, and then now you know that you're working on a project that LG Petrov is involved with, and now you're creating the artwork. Do you feel pressure that sort of, when you, when you say crazy, it kind of like puts you in, in those zones? Well, I love challenges. So I, okay. I come from sport. I come from, I love challenges. I'm physical. I love challenges. So when right. someone believes in me, because who, who doesn't believe me, I don't uh, work for them. I prefer uh, not having money the, rather than uh, working with someone that doesn't believe me. Mm. So I, it, it's already enough that they believe in me. So um, every idea they can talk me about, it's it, it's good. It's good because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the painter, so I have to develop it, make him make the do, that idea. Sometimes it's a stupid idea <laughs> because uh, it comes from people that uh, doesn't paint, doesn't. Uh, work mm. in visual arts so yeah sometimes just a simple idea i have to make it noble noble let's say uh, a better idea like visually uh, sure. i have to make it rich uh, better of course so it's uh, but to me it's a challenge it's my challenge. I have to win the challenge. I think yeah. I I have to win every challenge I do. I accept. So I accept all the challenges. And I feel you, man. I, Fuck I yeah. have to win. I have to win always. So I, I mind and body, mind and body is uh, my my mind and my body are um, focused only to make those uh, simple ideas better ideas visually i mean like you know the art and you do a fucking is... you do a fucking great job of that as well man you know i mean you've got yeah. such a unique style and you know all the colors and the detail everything you know i mean uh, there's a reason why uh, i i guess i suppose especially since like 2010s onwards you've been getting so many commissions especially from big names uh because you are able to deliver this unique style and and you can tell it's not bullshit no painting is a copy and paste of another painting it's all entirely unique and just a completely fresh approach and i think that very much speaks for itself yeah well uh, thank you very much I, i'm lucky because i I grown up in Italy. I'm, I've grown up in Italy, where uh, art and paintings, uh, uh, painting, uh, architecture, and you know, uh, the past, the a a ancient uh, stuff like churches, uh, palaces, are everywhere. So I'm, I'm already lucky for that. But yeah, I. I give I give all my best. I give all my all my strength, all my energies for that to do something new. I don't know, like uh, inspired, of course, by by that uh, that painters mostly. Yes. <laughs> Let's say that painters, but uh, who would you say inspires to... you? What? Who would you say so... inspires you? Well, you last, speak uh, of the dead painters. Well, other, other centuries, other centuries painters, European mostly. They okay. talk like when I'm painting, they talk to me. Like they suggest me uh, solutions, um, but not well, only them. I mean, like uh, also everything I see on the streets, like. Even abstract uh, art or uh, uh, commercial, uh, I don't know, commercials on the streets, everything. Interesting. Not only just the ancient uh, stuff. Um, just, just uh, make love, 
let's 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 uh, let's stay with everything yeah that's that's so, interesting man and and i think it's it's fascinating to me like there's one thing that's unique about your work um which uh, i think it's kind of like i guess everyone who commissions you or anyone who likes your work is the fact that you do take that sort of um older style of european painting i don't know if you can call it veronese or whether that's the correct uh style uh to uh to put on it but it's the fact that you take that and then you mix it with extreme metal and fucking death metal bands you know or black metal bands and i think that's a that's a very clever combination and i guess to a point it does work because there is that sort of depth when it comes to metal that you don't really find in many other genres or styles of music you know like uh, whether it's the lyrics or or just the general emotions that are within it it is a very very complex uh, subculture and genre yeah. so i think that works yeah. very well yeah also because the um, physical uh, lp mm -hmm. or also cd they are uh, you know it's cult it's uh, yeah. after years it increases the the the, the valor the, the you know the it, it becomes a masterpiece you know even uh, shitty artworks they become uh, glorious in years after years so yeah, yeah metal has the the right uh, philosophy let's say uh, for that because uh, art works become uh, eternal bit to me at least that's my point of view no i i agree with you man and i think i actually have this very strong belief in that especially with album covers i mean like you said it could be anything it could be maiden's number of the beast it could be mayhem's death crush or it can be the first battery you look at all of those and it almost feels like each artwork is simply an entire egregore of its own and this is something that gets fed into by the consciousness of hundreds and thousands uh in some case millions of people where it sort of it sort of exists in the metaphysical space somewhere purely by the attention and the love and the fascination that people will pay to it over the years so i think i i understand where you're coming from when you're saying that something will become legendary over time i think it's it um it goes hand in hand with that with that concept for me personally which i think is a very powerful thing and speaks to what art can really do it's uh well, you know it's also pro properly metal yeah because uh you know uh, uh, other uh, other kinds of music i don't know if they are uh, they have these cult artworks hmm. you know everyone has it has it uh it is her taste is uh, but uh metal i think it's objectively metal is as the most uh, religious artworks like, yeah you know, definitely you know what i mean yeah yeah i i know i know exactly what you mean Iron i think Maiden, for example Iron Maiden. yeah their eclipse uh, it's uh, they're not uh, technically perfect neither mine because I'm I'm a romantic. I'm not a technical painter. I'm instinctive. Hmm. I learned by myself. So interesting. But uh, you know, it's cult. It's uh, it's uh, it's our uh, religion. To me, it's religion. It is. Do you feel that <laughs> when you're creating artwork that you're adding to a piece of history every time you do this? No. I... maybe 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 yes i don't know unconsciously I, i'm not aware ah I'm... i see i see but I think, yeah. but i'm i'm sure of myself i'm sure about myself when i paint i'm uh, an animal i'm really uh, focused and 
you know maybe maybe yes i'm i know that but i just uh, stay grounded when i paint also so stay in the moment yeah yeah leave the moment leave the present so it's to um opposite uh, states that i live in uh, one moment all the time maybe mm. yeah so it's that deep down of course you are doing this but that thought may interfere with the process so the best you can do is eliminate any kind of perceptions and simply just channel the work and not think about it yeah hmm don't uh, come si dice che non do per niente per garantito for free, eh. for free. No, no no non è not for free eh. for granted <laughs> sì, for I don't that. take anything for granted sure so I every art every art work I do I yeah I feel like um you know I'm the the hero because I'm painting, I'm alone here. I'm alone all the time, so I'm. I feel like I'm the the maker. But also, uh, I don't take anything for granted. Like I'm every every artwork is a battle, a new battle to fight. Uh, it's a new new battle, and uh, if I have done. Uh, 1000 or 100 or two artworks in my past is the same i have to restart new a new world you know i have to invent create a new world when i whenever i'm starting a new uh, commission every you know, commission is different it's different every band every person is different so i'm trying to to be different every artwork uh, i do so that's that what i'm trying to say like... you mentioned uh earlier that uh, one of the reasons that you took up on gardening was that that's what your father used to do did you uh what sort of a relationship did your father or rather your parents have with you painting and uh and and did and did they get to see much of the work that you ended up doing down the line well my father died in 2007 so he didn't uh watch me he didn't watch me uh just uh, a professional painter mm. so he didn't uh, see me as professional painter so he didn't think uh, it was a good thing but uh, no I, with my father i had a bad uh, relationship really bad okay and yeah not well, I had to fight with everyone here to be a painter. Hmm. I had to fight with everyone. No, no much trust from people around. Um, Do you no. think it's that sort of mindset of like you said, we are all working, you know, and like you said, when you're working and getting paid by someone, the working conditions there and the mindset can very much be almost like a slavery-like mindset. So do you think it's that sort of discomfort that perhaps arises when one person chooses to do something different? Yeah, well, I live in a small town, of course, and in England, I think it's the same. I think uh, it's the same all over the world. It was the same... In Iran, I don't know. where I no, grew up, not the border, because uh, where I live is uh, uh, deeply uh, Christian. Mm. Where I live is deeply Christian and deeply uh, traditional. Uh, so, in particular, my town. In my in my region, I must say, my town is very grounded to some valors. 
So it has been uh, difficult when I was younger because of the judge of people. I I didn't care that much about it yeah. because I'm uh, naturally naturally um, free hmm. and insti- instinctive. I have to do what I want. That's my life. So this is uh, one thing about what you're saying, especially with the Christian upbringing that I can relate to. Um, I obviously, I wasn't surrounded by Christianity, but I was surrounded quite heavily by Islam growing up in Iran. And a very uh, similar sort of thing where once I discovered metal and I, I mean, I knew immediately that I wanted to become a musician and perform this type of music, which you can get arrested for over there, you know. And as a teenager, discovering mayhem and sort of clashing with that world around you in such a way, you know, where I was lucky because, you know, um, I did have support from my parents, but I really had to fucking earn it. And it wasn't without its headache and heartache, you know. And then you have other people in the family who are like, what's this kid turning into a fucking blasphemer and an infidel? And then you start clashing with school and then everyone just, you sort of like feel this position of you versus the entire world. And I I recognize that in in your story and I relate to it because, but, but I also, the way I look at it is that rather than be a victim of those circumstances, I think when such a thing happens, and when you learn to walk your own way, even if you do have to walk through fire, that's a beautiful and a special opportunity because it truly allows you to be free from the rest of the world and walk your own path. And I think that's a very special thing when that happens. Yeah, mostly because uh, one day we will be dead. Exactly. So now is the time. Now is the time. Yeah, man. I agree. No. I agree. And it's always worth not, doing that. Not tomorrow. Eh? What? Yeah, no, not tomorrow. And it's always worth doing that because, you know, it doesn't matter how hard it becomes. I think freedom and just doing what you want to do with your life is worth everything, you know, because if you don't have that, then what do you have? What are you doing? I don't know. Like yeah. many people uh, do what they don't want. They do what they don't want want to do. So yeah. like uh, family, kids, if because uh, everyone da- do that or uh, I don't know work, uh, I don't I'm not able to do that. Like I'm I'm simple. I have to do what I want. Yeah. Well, I, I think know. for me, for me, all of those things are fine as long as you really wish to do them and you choose to do them and you choose and you do them with the right people for you rather than simply just get tied down in circumstances and do it because everyone else around you is doing it is exactly that. And when I look behind you, you know, I see all of those artworks that is that's a sign of freedom right there. That's exactly yeah. what that is, and I respect that. I like it, man. It's very good. Good yeah, for you. It's freedom. It's uh, just uh, myself. It's just sign on yeah. my, myself. I don't know if it's freedom. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's uh, my need. Mm. As I talk, as I talk about uh, already, it's uh, uh, everything must be a need. For sure. Yeah. I have to paint like uh, I have to eat. Uh, to pee mm. it's uh, that's I, just a need i understand just that. A need. no more than that no more than that how long a does need. it usually take you to finish a painting uh, it's different it's different every painting because uh, yeah. ma- many commissions i have uh, good uh, customers i don't know clients yeah no no what, what's the right uh, yeah that's the right word, word clients yeah Clients, good yeah. clients. I am empathic with them. They're very understanding, and uh, I'm faster. I'm faster. Mm. Uh, many people are rational, very controlling. 
um, I'm slower. But uh, I, so, it's the challenge. It's my challenge. I have to win. I have to conquer. So I have to be the best at that. So it's it's always uh, the same same energy anyway. Um, of course, if if people are understanding and uh, empathetic, it's better. I will paint better. So basically, the better connection you have with whoever yeah. it is that's, that's recommending it yeah no but also 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 educate education i mean uh i must say this i must say this that uh, uh i've discovered the anglo-saxon people <laughs> since i work with painting and they're ed educate so like the like kinetal people people are uh, it depends on the zone. It depends on the uh, town. Uh, if they're from north, south, it's a bit different. It's uh, but most people from uh, most. I mean, not all the, all of them, but most people from North Europe and uh, USA, Australia, they are very good. Never uh, found someone that is. Uh, not educated, not respectful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's a, a law, law things, law thing. I mean, from the law, like uh, there's no illegality. Everything must be. So people also are, are very rational and, you know, respectful because they have to be. Uh, otherwise sure. they go to jail <laughs> but in italy if you are not uh, respectful you don't go to jail like uh, I, actually it's better if you're not uh, respectful and you're not correct here like it's a latin place hmm. so, so the philosophy that the way of uh, working with them uh, it's very different here now now i'm uh, well known a bit all, all over the world in in our uh, metal uh, in metal uh, how to say uh, metal world world yeah in the metal scene yeah 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 yeah, yeah scene exactly I'm a, a bit known so in Italy I have uh, more respect. And many people know me and try to understand me and but in in the in the beginning it it wasn't uh, like this like uh, I have to thank uh, I have to thank uh, many people from uh, anglo-saxon uh, countries like from uh, from Je from Je I mean, in general, from Germany to USA to Canada and Australia, because they have been uh, very um, respectful and also trusting me. They trusted me. Uh, in Italy, it has been uh, difficult. This has been, this is good and this is bad at the same time. I mean, uh, it's good because uh, it's a medieval place, Italy. So I can uh, have a garden and do an ancient life. Yeah. Right now. But for the modern uh, way of uh, working, no. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's Middle Ages here. For right. sure. Yeah. Well, I think you have sort of the perfect middle ground of getting yeah. to have this modest and sort of grounded lifestyle you know where you surround yourself by very simple things you know where you're doing your gardening you do your painting and i know you yeah. do a lot of workouts and things like that um and i think the fact that you then also get to communicate with the metal world and your artwork gets to published 
all over like uh, record stores around the world and uh, you know people get to access it and then get they get to wear it on a t-shirt that to me i don't know man that kind of sounds perfect actually in my world yeah. that's that's like okay you've got the you've got the balance right right you know perfect right down the middle and i think that's uh that's what i was saying earlier is that you can define success by okay how many pieces you do how much money you can make you know and that's all good but to me success is that having that kind of balance in your life that you get to dedicate your Samir. time to things that you give a shit about that make you feel complete Samir. yeah yeah i think they're exactly the same <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely you know i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you a totally different question here i know you used to be a wrestler can we maybe dig in a little bit into your background as a wrestler see what that part of your life was like well well uh, this has been just a passion and i've been uh, a wrestler like working out uh, every day for hours and uh uh competing uh weight loss um, the free step wrestler like it used to be a passion and this it's still a passion because when i'm painting i'm watching all the time the live uh, wrestling uh, competitions like europeans world uh, championships uh, everything mm. my passion it's my passion. Without the sport, I would have never been uh, the painter I am because it uh, right. <laughs> gave me discipline, discipline, the, um, also the fantasy. Because uh, freestyle wrestling is not, uh, uh, I don't know, track and fields or uh, swimming. It's uh, creating. Second by second, you have to create an action. Uh, improvising, it's just improvising. So it's like uh, jazz a bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, improvising because you have someone uh, you have to fight against uh, uh, that uh, acts acts. Uh, you don't know how. To, how is going to act? So you have to improvise. You have to create. So of course the time is different. Like six minutes in wrestling here it's yeah. I have deadlines, but you know I have days and nights. It's everything is uh, large. Everything is bigger and uh, you know i can breathe yeah i can breathe at last but uh, yeah sport uh, gave me a lot gave me That's a so lot interesting. Also, yeah yeah the passion also the passion uh, the discipline actually uh, many mm. years uh, past years i've been uh, not good here like i've been uh, insane I've uh, never stopped painting, even I, I, I was about to die, suicide. Oh. I used to paint, uh, even if painting was my torture, and I used to paint anyway. So right. this comes from the sport, because uh, you go on and on and on and on, and you even despise your own body your own mind you go you have to go on yeah yeah i mean there's there's a multitude of angles to this but i can absolutely relate to the fact that by learning discipline and mental resilience you get to overcome pretty terrible conditions you know even if these conditions might just be caused by yourself even you know because sometimes that happens too and or no, it might no. be something most of times most of yeah times. <laughs> it's it's the curse <laughs> of an artist i think yeah this You're... is uh this is our enemy is here it's yeah. not outside you are too creative i think and then and when you are creative you get to create your own problems 
yeah se- sensitivity sensitivity is a yeah. is a blessing and is a it's a curse uh, actually manila road the blessed curse that's right the blessed yes. curse blessed curse manila road is uh, i mean uh, it's uh, i show you the, the artwork i made for them this one that's so fucking cool, man. For anyone yeah. watching the video yeah. right now, that's that's fucking great. The, the blessed curse, the blessed curse, and Mark Shilton that is, that that died a few years ago. Yeah, he told me, he told me, he told me it's creativity too. It's uh, uh, he talks about me actually. He wanted uh, he wanted me photo of me with the death painting be inside the cd the booklet all right because okay. of, uh, yeah because he he knew we were friends you know that uh, i had this blessed curse as well so it's a uh, you know sensitivity sensitivity, sensitivity is, it uh... doesn't mean because uh, many people think that uh, sensitivity is uh, being uh, good people uh, you know, mild people, no. no. Sensitivity is, uh, you're crazy. I think no, so. Rules, no rules. Sometimes you have no rules. The, everything is, uh, you know, fuck it up. So you... And, and you're speaking about the process within your own mind when you say there are no rules. What? Sorry? So when you say there are no rules, exactly what is it that you're referring to there? Is that just what's going on in your head when you say there are no rules? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think uh, what's really important about this is that I actually wanted to point this out earlier, but I think one thing that happens with artists in general, and I know this might be a nauseum because I always talk about this on this podcast because art to me is extremely important. You know, it's what makes life worth living almost. Um, but it's also the thing that makes it hard to live as well. It's a very interesting paradox. But to me, um, the way I look at it is that artists are naturally more sensitive people. So when you're exposed to information, you react differently than most normal people do. I mean, a lot of normal people might, they might still get affected by that information but as an artist it's almost like you have to soak it up absorb it become one with that information and project it back out into the world but sometimes those things there's poison mixed in with them you know so when you observe too much the reality of the world and you spend too much time if if you watch the news or if you do anything like that as an artist that can be so detrimental for your own well-being i think or spending too much time on social media, whatever. It, it can be any of these things. Um, so I think it's very important that you regulate. Yes. Social media Social media are better because uh, there are a lot of lies, a lot of, uh, no, a lot of uh, mystifying things, a lot of fantasy. Sure, there is sure. food. There is a lot of food too. I love food. So uh, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, you know, you can choose, you can... You can uh, you can uh, die in uh, whatever you want. You know, you know. Mm. It's, uh, it's choose your vice. Choose your vice exactly. You can choose your vice exactly, but uh, you know, TV is different. Like it's uh, like news. News. It's I never. I I don't know. I, nothing about news like, i don't know Good. who's the president now I, I don't know who's the president here in italy um uh, for real you don't know who's the president no okay that's cool no i, I don't i don't know that. but uh, when i see tv because uh, if i see tv or if someone tells me i forget because i don't care uh, once i was like uh, caring mm. about um, news about uh things and informations mostly now i don't i don't care i live my own world yeah i'm blessed i mean because i do what i like for job so i'm blessed i'm uh, uh, i'm always in 
inside my thoughts, inside my paintings. I don't I don't live reality. Really I don't live reality. That's powerful, I'm blessed. Man. I mean it's a privilege. It's a privilege. I, I know that. I, I am aware about it. But That's just in line just in line with that, how were you affected, let's say three years ago when everyone started going into lockdowns and shit? Did that have any kind of impact on you at all? No, I I, I had to work anyway. So um, no, I, I live at those years uh, very well because like uh, uh, painting all the time and uh, going home, nothing, uh, nothing happened. I, I, had, uh, I worked, I worked because I always work. It's a funny thing, man. You know, freedom is, is such a valuable thing. You, but you can tell that... You know, once you once you set that level of independence aside for yourself, you find your own character, your own meaning in life. It can be a great thing. But also, it is equally, um, it's not an easy thing to navigate. Once you are truly free, like you said, there are no longer any rules. So you sometimes just have to create your own that suit you and your, your life. Otherwise, you just descend into madness because then you realize that there are no boxes to insert your thoughts into and it's just chaos. And when you have only chaos and pure substance, that doesn't really lead anywhere. But you need that discipline and those boxes, which I guess, like you said earlier, that's that's where training and working out and uh, sports and things like that and just maintaining a physical uh, balance actually yeah, becomes extremely important. And it's something that I recommend to all artists, all musicians, all painters, everyone, they're the first people who should be partaking in physical exercise. Yeah, yeah. I I think the same. Yeah, Daniel, I'm trying to Sorry. It's my, my photographer has a terrible cough. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you had yeah. a bunch of weights in the, in the corner as well whilst we were talking earlier. Uh, the guy. Your weights, weightlifting, dumbbells. Uh, sometimes, no, sometimes, no. It, not, not very much. I now I am working out with um, kettlebells, but uh, kettlebells, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but re, uh, it's resistance, not uh, like uh, being the strong man I used to be. No, because my back and my neck, my knees, also my hip, they're fucked up sometimes. No, my hip is fucked up to totally, so, uh, because of uh, wrestling. So now yeah. I'm uh, working with uh, lower, not low, not low, lower weights uh, with kettlebells in circuits, like uh, maybe half hour, 30 minutes, uh working out continuously uh free body gym no not weights like you know i i cannot do weightlifting no more like i used to be very strong at that but now <laughs> yeah what's uh, your no. uh, what's your pr on bench press no, I don't do a bench press. I think yeah, I but don't when do... you when you used to be strong, what's what's the heaviest you you lifted before when you used to do it? Uh, I used to weight uh, sixty six kilos. All right. I used to be sixty six kilos. Yeah. Personal weight, mine. I used to lift uh, one hundred thirty. On bench press. Yeah. That's great, man. Those Italian jeans. I don't strength. know what is it with you I'm guys. You're all my... just freakishly strong. I, I'm strong. Uh, we we are wrestler. We we're stronger uh, with the uh, back, s, um, mostly uh, deadlift, and mostly the uh, what the pull ups, bar pull ups. Yeah. yeah. And the, the the rope. Oh, the rope! Interesting. Yeah. Rope, so I guess a lot of a lot compounds, of 
and a lot, a lot of old of, school. Bro, a lot of yeah. I was very strong at rope. Actually, yeah. my my back is huge. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. now, still now, still now. Yeah, no, no. Ro uh, back is everything in wrestling because you have to, you know. Ah, I guess it is. Yeah, there's a lot of pole movements, and you need to use your traps and your lats. Uh, and you need to keep. Uh, that would make sense to me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Traps, uh, traps. Mine are uh, huge. Yeah. Traps and lats are huge. I've seen, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Well, tell you what. Let's uh, let's wrap this up in a in, in a in a sports like fashion since we've gone down this direction of conversation. I'm gonna ask you a very important scientific question. Okay. And this is a very serious question. What do you think is the correlation between testosterone and man o war? Well, uh, man o war uh, is my religion. Yeah, right on, right on. I, no, I knew no, this, that's why I asked. No, uh, man o war is everything to me. Yeah. David, my life uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, many times like uh, man war is uh, is my life yeah uh, i don't even uh, mention them like i don't even uh, talk about them uh, i talk about them when i'm drunk because i'm you know you became uh, uh, nostalgic and everything but sure. uh, they they are inside of me even so much that I never talk about them uh, because they're, they're inside of me. It's my religion. Uh, man war is my religion. Like, old man war till uh, warriors of the world, but I discovered something new lately, like um, Lord of Steel is good. I yeah. used to blame it when it came out. Now I'm starting to be older and understanding some choices. Um. Yeah, but you know, man, or it's my life. Things of metal, huh? Yeah, it's my life. It's my life. Like the like there, there are the. I have the CDs here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There are CDs here. There are CDs. Here, I have many Jesus. cities, even at home, but uh, yeah. Manowar, Manowar are uh, here, uh, sorry, and they are separated. They, I keep them uh, ah. separated from uh, everything else, like even Perfect. from my Romanian that I love a lot, My f one of my favorite bands. So to anyone um, just listening to the audio for this, uh, Paul has basically got a giant CD collection, and then in the corner he's got the small spot where he keeps the Manowar CDs Man away War, from the other Man CDs. Man War CDs. <laughs> That's <yeah>. great. <laughs> no, uh, it's a religion. It's a religion. A religion. They're sacred. They're uh, just uh, there. They're, they're there. Have you Not ever to... met them? No, never. I don't what think would you I do? Can. You don't, don't think you I can. Think I, can? I would like uh, Eric Adams, maybe. Eric Adams. Eric Adams, yes, but not uh, Jody Mayo. Even if I know that Jody Mayo is uh, wonderful, like a wonderful artist, it has been. He has been a wonderful artist, uh, but uh, I don't. I don't care about. Uh, I'm a. I'm a painter. I know that. Uh, the private man is different from the artist. Mm. Is uh, artists are uh, ego e egocentric? I don't know how to say like ego egocentric. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a correct so, word. Yeah, so maybe it's. Uh, mm. uh, I don't know. Like, if things uh, come by coincidence, are okay, but. I don't force the situations. Sure. Like, it's okay. I, I, we can uh, we can share the music. It's okay. It's, I'm already okay. I don't have to know 
if you eat uh, spaghetti tomorrow, if, you, if your wife is uh, blonde or uh, black, I don't care. Mm -hmm. If you like uh, jeans or other pants, I don't, I don't care. I don't, really don't care. I just uh, enjoy your music, and to me, it's the most, the best uh, form of, um, form of uh, communication. Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's what I always I looked care. at it as. Yeah, it's an invisible form of communication when words fucking fail you. That's, That's everything right. to me. That's everything to me. It's so I, yeah, sometimes I have the, if I meet someone, uh, I don't want to to ruin his life maybe is uh, i don't know is privacy being, uh, yeah yeah privacy I exactly that. yeah yeah i maybe think you were the... uh, with his wife or is he thinking about uh, his mother or uh, i don't know is watching something good is beautiful i don't want to be you know um I don't know the the word how to say. It. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. You don't want to overextend the boundaries. And I think honestly, man, That's you're it. you're uh, you are like the best. You're the perfect kind of fan for anyone to have, you know. And I I I, I presume that this is part of this is obviously just your own experiences and understanding, but also the fact that you're an artist yourself. I think yeah, that is such an important thing because it's like. You know, when you do, uh, obviously, I, I've had a lot of very great interactions, mostly my interaction with bands and people I've met have been very good. And I'm super lucky, actually, that I get to converse with a lot of them through this medium of podcast. Uh, and uh, obviously yourself included now as well. I think it's great. But um, there is that thing that, say, if you approach someone for a picture, it's almost like you're asking something from them. And what I'm taking from you is that, their art has already spoken to you to such a level where you don't need anything else. That's all you wanted from them. And I think that's such a beautiful thing, man. Certainly. No, I, when I was younger, maybe I was different, but now I'm just, I think that uh, if you do something, it speaks. Yeah, for sure. Not only well, art, not only art, everything. Uh, actually, I don't speak that much. Even uh, I don't argue too. Because uh, yeah. if you do something wrong, or if I do something wrong, there's nothing to talk about. Like, yes, there is some something to talk about, but not that much. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. you know, uh, things go themselves i understand yeah yeah and tell you what uh, between uh, between uh, sensitive people of course not uh, if you yeah. communicate with the uh, uh, average people like sometimes you have to you know explain and speak and yeah but uh, you know in art like for example, man over to me, or uh, maybe Iron Maiden for someone else, or uh, Dio for someone else. Uh, it's uh, what I have to say, what I have to speak about. Hmm. Nothing. Um, nah, that's that's brilliant, man. That's very powerful. And I tell you what, you also do a great job of communicating through your own artwork. And uh, Paula, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast this evening man i do thank you very much for your time um, you. uh, this is sort of like the very i guess slightly less casual part of the conversation but is there anything you would like to plug to the audience at all anywhere you want them to come and uh, uh i don't know either check out uh, anything that you've got coming up at the moment with your artwork or anything uh, now in this moment yes in this moment if what you i'm choose. doing I am doing this. <laughs> yes. It's crazy. <laughs> totally crazy. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Totally crazy. It's okay. a grind. It's a grind ratio. It's a gr grind core ratio. 
Right. In USA, issue. Yeah. They're uh, deformed bodies, like deformed bodies uh, with the fucked up ancient Rome, like psychedelic so ancient cool, Rome, man. like Look you are on a, on a trip. You're going to have a fucking trip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, deformed bodies. And I'm working on it. And it's fucking crazy. The first days, they told me, I want, I want it in yellow. Everything yellow. Uh, yellow. First days, I was about to go crazy because if you, if you stare at yellow for hours, you go crazy. Now I'm used to. Now I'm used to. Uh, I was, uh, I was about, uh, about to go crazy. First days, okay. uh, yellow is uh, yellow is not like many many bands. Tell me, like, uh, do this in blue, do this in red. It's okay, but yellow never happened before. It's <laughs> well, it's Stare a powerful painting, man. Look at that. I mean, fucking hell, that's cool as fuck. Yeah. I mean, for anyone on youtube you can you can see what he's showing us <laughs> no, here but no, that's it's just wild crazy. it's not uh, it's not blasphemous it's, uh, it's strange uh, yeah no but the vision I alone thought, is powerful man I, I love it can you tell us who the artist is uh, i don't know it's uh well, maybe not yet it's an american uh, wax vessel wax wax like wax wax the wax statues the wax uh, like mm, Madame Tussaud. Uh, no, but I mean, I mean, which band is the reissue for? Or can you not I tell don't us know. yet? It's a reissue of a band. They didn't. They didn't tell me the ah. the, the, the band because I don't listen to grind at all. But Fair uh, I'm extreme in my in my mind. I'm very extreme. So I like what when I when when they tell me do something extreme. I I, I know how to be extreme. Even Amazing. if I don't listen to extreme that much, I'm uh, yeah. I, I I I I know how to be black, like black. I know how to be. I don't know why. I'm yeah. just extreme in my mind. I don't have uh, middle uh, middle ground. Yeah. No, I don't have. I don't. I, have. I relate I'm to like, that, man. I very much relate to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, brother, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much once again for your time. You know, I know it's quite Thank late over there much. now as well. So I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, to anyone else listening to the podcast as well, if you've made it thus far, then thank you for joining us. Please be sure to go check out some of Paolo's crazy fucking good paintings and uh, give him your support, okay? <laughs> And we'll see you guys Thanks. on the next episode. Cheers.